Okay, can you hear me now? Please tell me yes. Hello, sisters. Okay. So. Okay. Do you guys hear, like, a little bit of static? From the mic? Or no? Because to me, today, the mic sounds less good than it did before. A tiny bit. Because to me, it's like a lot of static. Like, maybe it's the headphones I'm using. I'm not sure, but I'm not sure. Okay. No static for you. Okay, so maybe it's just for me. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> so. I have two monitors. I have a PC. I have this. I got this thing. Literally. So, my sister got, like is a tech person like she built my computer for me and like got me the stuff and like told me you know anyway I was at her house and I was like setting up the software and everything and I was like okay this is the kind of mic I have and I have this issue with like the sound and I was like do I need to get one of those like muff cover things and I was like there's many types which kind of thing should I get because she's like an audio person but then she was like no and she just gave this to me so We'll see. I thought it was going to cover my face, but actually with the way I'm sitting, it's not covering my face. I don't know if it does anything, but I think it's doing something. I don't know. Um, okay, so guys, remember how I was like the first section of this book is called Identity and I'm not happy about this, but I was like, if we get through the first section of the book, I know the rest of it will be better. That is how it sounds. To <laughs> that's how it, <laughs> that's where we are, sisters. Um, yeah. Okay, good, good. All right. <clears throat> so. I have to say, I actually really liked, like, I don't know how to, like, her writing voice. Like, the, the phraseology of it was, like, really smooth. I liked that. It was, like, very articulate and smooth. I liked that. Um, I also, I wasn't expecting it to be about, like, the experience at a women's college. So that was, like, really interesting to me. Um, I don't know. And I, I saw what some of you guys were saying in the live chat. And I totally was like, Yes. Um, I mean, obviously, it was, like, quite aggravating for my first. Yes, Mad Adam says there are some things that she took exception to in this essay. Yes, I also took exception to many things in this essay. But as you know, I like to have my brain stretched out a bit. So, all right, let's start. Like, I don't know, it was a very fluid reading experience for me. Fluid, get it? <laughs> like... I, I didn't I wasn't at a point where I was like how many more pages till the end of the essay, which I sometimes felt with the Marilyn Fry essays. It was like kind of intense to read those. Okay. So let us just start at the beginning. I'm just gonna like scan the pages with my eyeballs. Also, I feel like this is going very well with the new camera and the new mic and all this crap. So what I'm thinking is that maybe maybe I will do this analysis and immediately start the next essay. Or actually no. I'll leave the next essay for the other day. But I think that after the analysis, I might read a few more chapters of this. All right. Okay. I have to say, it feels very, very bright, the camera. Like, I, I feel, like, overlit. You know, what's the word for that? I forgot the word. Like, washed out. How about we try that? But now it's, like, dark from one side. No, that's not good. That's why I had, like, one lamp on each side. Well, whatever. Okay. <laughs> Momo's face. Yes, Momo. That's how I feel about this essay. Also, like, I really feel like Momo is being excluded too much from the... I'm scared to touch my mic because I keep losing audio for some fucking unknown reason. Anyway, tilt this down a bit more. <laughs> Overlit. <laughs> Kamutashio, did you see my one armed, my one armed dab when you dropped in? <laughs> okay. Alrighty. So. Oh, also, good news. I am definitely for sure moving, getting a new place on June first, and I think I'm getting the master bedroom. So. I'm going to set up, like, a whole corner of the room just for streaming shit. It's going to be fucking amazing. Like, this will be, like, not taking up half my room. This display. Okay. Alrighty. 
Yes, I'm very excited because also like it's so stressful. <laughs> and they're like, give us your credit score and your tax information and your proof of income and how much is your savings? And it's like, oh my fucking god, can you fuck off? Like I wouldn't be asking for this house if I couldn't afford the rent. You know what I'm saying? Anyway, okay. All right, so. Okay, actually, before we get going, I want to know which college this woman fucking taught at. Is it Smith? Is it? No, this is when having two screens is helpful, apparently. Okay. Also, I think I need to get something to, like, elevate my computer more. Because I feel like the camera is, like, right in front of me. And I want it to be a little bit above looking down. Like, I don't know. I just feel very, like, you know? Okay. It's also like a big adjustment not being on a Mac. <laughs> like, what have I done here? Okay. Okay. Because I looked her up before and it was in the bottom. Is it Wellesley? It's in the bottom in the description of this video. Actually, why don't I just go to my YouTube channel? <laughs> because it's in the description of the last video. <laughs> like, when I wrote out the descriptions, it was like two weeks ago. And I was like, I'm going to do these videos this week. Like, I brought this book with me when I went to Toronto. Well, I did the introduction while I was in Toronto. Um, what am I doing here? Okay. It's disappeared. I guess it's like processing or something, but okie dokie. Excuse me. Here we go. So, Carla Golden, PhD, has taught the psychology of women for nine years and during that period has lectured extensively on topics related to the development of gender and sexuality and psychoanalytic, psychoanalytic object relations theory. She taught at Smith College. There we go. I was thinking it must be Smith or Wellesley. Yeah. She taught at Smith College for six years and is currently an associate professor of psychology at Ithaca College. Ooh, I've been to Ithaca College for some stuff. Between these two land-based teaching experiences, she traveled around the world on ship teaching the psychology of women as part of the University of Pittsburgh Semester at Sea program. A Danforth associate who's committed to excellence in teaching, she has published articles in Feminist Teacher and Women's Studies Quarterly. Okay, so I have these links here about her. So she has published two books of lectures on the psychology of women. Then there's this other book called Debating the Ethics of Science and Culture and Culture of Homosexuality. And it's like an anthology. Okay, there's like 20 people listed here, but most of them are men. So I have to be honest, I don't really feel like I want to read this book. Anyway, interesting. Okay, so... Shot at Smith. What's this link here? Is she? I think she's the one who is like an emeritus at Ithaca now. Because I mean, if she started teaching in the 70s. She's not young, right? Birth, 1950. There you go. Ithaca College, 1983 to present. Yeah. Smith, 1978 to 1983. And then Ithaca College, 1983 to now. Oh. Okay. Oh, wow. There's like a huge background on her Ugh, I think she's gone all woke listen to this in 1983 Golden was hired at Ithaca College where she is now a full professor of psychology she continues her work as the on the psychology of sexuality with attention to sex and gender diversity like you know I would love to be able to read that phrase and think she means like, oh, like masculinity and femininity within womanhood or whatever. Like, I'd love to be able to read that phrase and actually have like a good faith interpretation of the term gender diversity. 
but we all know that's not what this fucking means anymore, right? We all know that what the actually gender diversity means is gender essentialism. Okay, let's keep moving. Um, ugh. In her writing, Golden argues that gender is neither fixed nor predetermined by prenatal hormones. She exp- Well, at least she's not an HBSer. She doesn't think hormones are the problem. She explores the broad and diverse expression of gender in trans communities and concludes that gender develops over time and remains mutable. Well, at least she has some kind of academic integrity then, right? If she thinks that sexuality is fluid and gender is fluid and neither of them are, like, mutable, that's at least some kind of academic integrity. Beyond her scholarly writing, Golden remains most passionate about teaching, both in college classrooms and in the larger community. She makes current psychological research applicable and relevant to you. Okay, whatever. For me, feminism is my work as a psychologist, and in teaching students, I use feminist psychological theory to help them navigate their lives. I think it is a useful tool for everyone. Okay, what does that actually mean? Because, like, okay, when I was reading this essay, I felt like it was more like an essay on, like, feminism than on psychology, which obviously I'm not, like, against. I was, that's cool. But, um, I, despite that, I didn't actually feel like there was like a ton of feminist analysis. It was like, it was like she was coming at it with like a feminist lens, but there wasn't much like specific criticism or like, this is what's wrong or you know what I mean? Okay, whatever. Let's just go through the essay now. Okay. All right. Yeah, Julia. um, When I, as I was um, reading this, I literally was like, well, this woman is really postmodern. She's probably into gender shit these days. And considering she's still technically a professor at Ithaca College, I assume she's not an evil turf. So that's disappointing. Okay. So, I also think it's very interesting that the book starts on this essay. Does that mean a lot of the other women in this book, like, this is setting the tone for what their essays are going to present us? Like, I'm not quite sure, but it's interesting. Okay. So the very first part of the essay, there's no such thing as homo, hetero, bi, and ace. This is, like, oversimplistic, is where she starts off with. Um, You know, like, intellectually, I'm open to the idea of, like, in different time periods, in different, like, um, phases of, like, societal conception that people saw, like, you know, if you were around when I was reading sophistries early on, like, many hundreds of years ago, thousands of years ago sexuality was seen more as like an act you did like a thing you did one time like you like went for a walk you had sex it was like a thing you did one time it's not like this is who you are and what you like right so it wasn't seen as prescriptive and i'm like open that if somebody views it that way and they want to describe it to me that way i'm open to thinking about it that way obviously i'm open to thinking about anything but To me, it was like she said, like, these categories are not accurate. And I was like, okay, so you're going to tell us how, right? And then she was just kind of like, well, sometimes people say one thing and do a different thing. And I'm like, but that doesn't mean the categories mean nothing. It just means the people are being, like, dishonest. Or that they're trying to aspire to something that they haven't quite reached. Or whatever, like, a fantasy or something. It doesn't mean that the categories don't exist. Like, um... Yeah, Dragon, I saw that shit. No, no, Ithaca's upstate. Ithaca's kind of close to Buffalo. It's like two hours from Buffalo, I think, or an hour from Buffalo or something. Yeah, yeah, no, it's not New York City. It's very close to Canada, Ithaca College. Ithaca College and Cornell, they're like right, like, I think it's an hour from the Canadian border or something. Okay. Um. Right, so she's like, these categories are oversimplistic. Like, this is, like, the definition of postmodern. Because she's literally being, like, you know, if someone calls herself a lesbian, but she only has sex with men, like, who are we to say she's not a lesbian? And I feel like, honestly, and so, like, the second page of the essay, the second page of the essay, she is, like, Adrian Rich, the lesbian continuum. Um, Now, I really need to do like a Benji's Matchbox or something about Adrian, the essay, the Adrian Rich compulsory heterosexuality essay where the, compul- the lesbian continuum is brought up. Because I definitely have had like evolving thoughts about it like over the years. Um, but to me, it felt like very utilitarian. She was like, I'm about to say a bunch of like 
stuff that's very controversial to feminists. So before I get into that, I'm going to um <clears throat> I'm going to like mention a well-liked, well-respected lesbian author. And then I'm going to make my controversial opinion so that if you think that I'm saying something bad, it's like, well, I started it based on what this woman you like said. I don't know. It's kind of manipulative because um, she doesn't bring up anything like the continuum or radical. Like Adrian Rich is like, well, Adrian Rich was married to a man for most of her life. Like to me, it's like I can't personally tell you if I think she was or wasn't a lesbian. She wrote a lot of lesbian poetry. She wrote the compulsory heterosexuality stuff, which you know is like presumably based on her personal experience. But anyway, so she mentioned Rich, which honestly, like if she had written the whole essay on like this topic, like what she thinks, like, you know, some women have different labels, but that might not be the way they behave. And why do they behave that way? And why do they use this label? She could have written an essay about that entirely as a response to the compulsory heterosexuality essay. And that would have been very good because there's like several things in that essay that are like really, really sal salient to what she's mentioning, but she only brings up the continuum. And I was like, that's kind of like weak sauce, man. Um, anyway. So just to briefly... The continuum, the concept of the continuum is that, like, even, like, a mother-daughter relationship or, like, um, like a woman-woman, like, kind of, like, sisterly relationship, something like that, even that constitutes lesbianism. Because the way that Rich describes lesbianism in that essay is that lesbianism is, like, a centering of women in your lives, like, a prioritizing of women in your lives. So, whether that means, like, emotionally, psychologically in terms of behavior and activity or in actual sex, whichever of those, those all exist on a continuum of how much are you centering women in your lives. I think this is a great idea, like a great concept. Yes, centering women in your lives is good. Do that shit, have an awareness of it, talk about it. Very good. I don't think that has much to do with lesbianism. Like, you know, I, I'm reminded of the, in um, Marilyn Fry, <laughs> I'm going to be referencing that, those essays forever, man. I'm reminded in the Marilyn Fry how she brings up the idea of like, okay, we need to be careful to not like romanticize and like fantasize about things to be realistic. So I, I have this view that like, if a lesbian, if someone, if a woman is a lesbian and she truly accepts her sexuality and her sexual orientation and her like innate, what's the word they use in here? Homo emotional attraction her life would be constructed almost entirely around women because that is like in her nature. But is this what we see in society? No, obviously not. So I think that's only possible once you like completely like shed all your phallocentric conditioning. And uh, like most, almost no lesbians really try and do that, right? Anyway, what was my point? I had a point. Right, so I would love to think that like, all women exist on the lesbian continuum and that like actual homosexual women like center women in their lives and all this stuff. But like Marilyn Fry says, is it useful to like fly off into these flights of fancy when actually in the real world, that's not really how most lesbians operate? <clears throat> yes, Corner. Corner says centering um, women isn't lesbianism. It's just feminism. Yes. But I do think that if you are like a lesbian, you are like predisposed to that type of behavior way more than a non-lesbian woman would be. Um, and it's just a matter of like recognizing that on a subconscious level, I think. I don't know anyway. So. Yeah. Okay. Then she brings up this, which I also love this, The Radical Lesbian. I haven't read it. I need to, I'll probably read it on the channel, even though it's like, I think easy to find for free online. It's just like a really important piece of history. So The Radical Lesbians in 1973 were like, an, they were originally like a project of the Gay Liberation Front. And then they were like, these men are assholes, fuck off. And they left, became their own thing. So The Radical Lesbians in 1973, they were the first, I'm pretty sure, 
the first group of women to use the term women identified women. What did they mean? Women identified women. It is not anything to do with gender. Well, it is, but not in the current sense. Because in this essay, there's also at one point someone says male identified. What does this mean? Did they mean the woman identifying as a man? No, no, no. What they mean is your psychology. When they use the term woman identified woman, they mean your sense of self and your relation to the people around you. So are you like a woman centered woman? Who recognizes her womanhood? Or are you like a male-centered woman? A woman who prioritizes a phallist, basically. Right? That's what they mean when they use it in the 70s. Um, okay. It's kind of like the masculine of center or feminine of center-esque type thing. Kind of. Like the earlier version of that. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so, 1973, the, the radical lesbians in their Woman Identified Woman article, focused on the political as oppressed as opposed to the specifically sexual nature of lesbianism when they defined it as, quote, the rage of all women condensed to the point of explosion, end quote. In that same, in that same essay, they talk about, like, the potentiality, like, specifically what I was mentioning before. The Well, I don't even know if it's an essay. I think it's more like a manifesto, but she says it's an article, whatever. In that same article, they talk about, like, the lesbians are oriented not only sexually but like emotionally and psychology psychologically towards other women and how this is like like what i was saying like so to like truly accept and be comfortable with your lesbianism the result will be that you are like very woman oriented in your life generally um anyway i'll read it eventually okay yeah but like the next one is literally feminism who said that before that it's just feminism um, corner. Listen to this shit. Well, not shit, but stuff, I guess. Okay. This is from Blanche Wiesen Cook in her Chrysalis article on female support networks and political activism. She defined lesbians as, quote, a woman who loves women, who chooses women to nurture and support and to create a living environment in which to work creatively and independently, whether or not her relations with these women are sexual, end quote. It's literally just feminism. Look, I'm not saying it's a bad thing and we shouldn't do that. That's great. That's Amazing. Good. But is that what lesbianism is? No, obviously not. Okay. <laughs> I don't know, though. Um, oh, the lovely poem says, if you're not sure if you're a lesbian, then you're not a lesbian. I don't know. Like, I've been talking, like, I've been talking about a lot in the last couple of months, like two months or whatever phallocentric heterosexual society is designed to program all women this is your purpose the whole point of your vagina is for a man this is your purpose like to me it's almost like a fucking miracle when women can be raised that shit through that shit and i don't mean like your parents telling you this i mean you've watched any tv show you ever saw porn that's what i mean like everywhere like implicitly everywhere it's almost a miracle if you can be raised with that shit and not internalize it to the extent that, well, I, I must owe some men something. Or, like, I should try something with some man. To me, it's, like, almost a miracle for women to come out of that. Like, like these girls, like, she talks about girls. Was that it? Yeah, which, when she talks about the primary lesbians. She talks about what was the age, like, 8 to 12 or something. Like, I have met, obviously, lesbians who knew at a very young age that they were gay. Anyway, my point is that... We, we shouldn't go to the other extreme and say, like, if you ever think you might be lesbian, then you are. Because that's how trans got started, right? Like, that's how they spread their shit. But I think we do need, like, a space for women to... Like, I, I think that this type of an essay is, like, a good thing to talk about, to think through. But I don't agree with most of it. Um, Okay, yes, we're all on the same page. Okay, so, yes, the this week, uh, this week saw definition of lesbianism. Okay, so she's like, these are the definitions that de-emphasize sexuality. And I'm like, you're literally discussing a fucking sexual orientation. So why would you discuss it without the sexual, like, as like a thought experiment, I get it. But I don't, like, I don't really understand why the fuck she talked about it for like three paragraphs. Okay. Okay. 
So she mentions this Ann Ferguson lady. I don't know who she is. Okay, she's not in the book, so. She mentions that Anne Ferguson is not into this de-emphasizing and diminishing um, of the differences. She's also, this Ferguson lady was like, I am not, um... Yeah, the, like this historical revision thing. So it's like I was saying. So if somebody in ancient Greece conceived of their sexuality as in like kind of unconnected incidences of an action that took place rather than this is the action I like or I am oriented towards. Therefore, this is what I do. If they view themselves like that and they wrote, you know, like, okay, well, it's not like they were writing diaries in ancient Greece, but like, you know, and then we took up that diary. I think it is inaccurate for us to say this person is a homosexual or whatever. Because it's like we're putting our perspective on their experience, right? Um, like, honestly, that's how I feel about Sappho. Because also, didn't she have sex with men? And, like, the women she had sex with were, like, fucking children. So, like, anyway. Okay, whatever. Okay. So this is Ferguson's lesbian definition. Quote, a lesbian is a woman who has sexual and erotic emotional ties primarily with women and who, or who sees herself as centrally involved with a community of self-identified lesbians whose sexual and erotic emotional ties are primarily with women and who is herself a self-identified lesbian. End quote. Okay, so. Even this definition of lesbian to me is very, very weak sauce because it literally includes bisexual women. And like, I don't know. To me, when I look back at, like, the kind of old school stuff that was going down and how, like, lesbians and bisexuals were, like, always grouped together and, like, stuff that was for lesbians, like, included the bisexual women because it was, like, you know, if you love women and you want to support the women who love women and you need to be supported in that way, that's where you go, right? To me, that's, like, good. Um, like, I don't know, reading about the, like, Lesbian Avengers autobiography and how there was, like, bisexual women there and they didn't need... Well, at least in the book. They didn't need to make it all about being bi all the fucking time because they were like, the reason I'm here is because I'm with women and that's what you're here for. So why do I need to talk about my male shit? That was like the kind of sense I got about it. And I think that's actually like a really good thing. And I love that. I think it's a good thing for like, I've talked about this before. I think like women, a lot of our power relies on our connections with each other. So I am a lesbian separatist at this point and I'm all for like centering lesbians and taking care of lesbians and focusing on lesbians, all that shit. Yes, but. I don't think it's a bad thing necessarily for bisexuals to be grouped in to um, get support for that kind of thing from lesbians. However, does this mean that they are a lesbian? No, it does not. I kind of find it like, I don't know, this is like problematic. <laughs> Didn't she? Am I wrong? You guys don't know this shit about you go, guys. You should look up Sappho. She's like very problematic. <laughs> okay. Um, Yes. Lovely Poem says, we no longer have any of our own spaces, so young lesbians have no idea how validating and embracing that is to be totally surrounded by other lesbians. Yes. And so that's what I'm kind of talking about. Exactly that. It's like, I think, okay, maybe I'm wrong, but isn't that the case? Somebody look it up. Am I stupid? This is what I had understood to be the situation. Um, karma jumping off the cliff meme. <laughs> yeah. Um, what was my point yeah so i think it would be a positive thing for bisexual women to experience that obviously but it's like if that doesn't exist like to me the situation you're describing this like validating embracing like lesbian centric space it doesn't exist right and for us to build it from scratch it necessarily must start and end as female centric and so if you start it with bisexuals who have not experienced this type of space who do not 
in, who have not internalized what it is to actually center women all the times, if you start that space with them, it will necessarily not be a female centric space. Um, at least that's how I've like I've seen these women try to get these types of groups going and adding bisexual women, and that's how it turns out. And that's just like sad to me. Um, anyway, so I'm all for supporting the bi's, but they're not lesbians. I don't know, like even if she thinks that the terminology and the categories are too like restrictive or whatever okay fine but like i still think that there are categories like at the very least we can all agree there's a very like firm line between would i ever or would i never consider having sex with a man right okay all right Okay, listen to this shit. Listen to this. This is the phrase that when I read it, I was like, this woman is going to be woke now. Listen to this. Some have argued that attempts to define who and who is not lesbian will only be divisive. And it seems undeniable that to a certain extent it has been. Jacqueline Zita has aptly referred to this judging and weighing of who does and does not qualify for membership as the lesbian Olympics. Um... Hey, Clown World. Oh, hey, Rachel. Um, I totally agree. Pride is now a shameful celebration of maleness and extreme sex. I completely agree. Um, and yes, Kamutashio, I also agree that um, <clears throat> human minds work on categorization. So trying to be like, well, don't do the categorize. Like, even queer theory, it's all built on categorization. They're just telling you to categorize stuff differently. It's not about not having categories. It's about making them the right categories. So, like, anyway. So. I don't know. It's very, this essay is very wishy-washy. Like, in this paragraph and the later paragraph, she literally is like, you know, for, like, political and social activism, you need to have, like, a cohesive group with, like, one definition to get shit done. That's good. And then she is like, well, you know, like, that's good, but we don't want to be mean to people. And I'm like, can you fucking pick a, like, pick a lane lady? Like, I don't know, like, like I was saying before, it's like, there's stuff in the essay that's, like, in the terms that she would use, incongruous. But it's like, okay, if you're going to have that, like, play it out on both sides and tell us why you think this side and why you think that side. Don't, like, put it all in a jumble and be like, yep, that's what I think. It's, like, kind of stupid. Okay. Something I do find that I liked in here. Um, was that she was like, but even regardless of all this, like, discussion of categorization, how society categorizes people might not have much to do with how a woman experiences or self-interprets her whatever. Uh, whereas describing a social group is quite different from the psychological task of understanding what it means to any particular woman to identify as a member of that group. In fact, the construction of a categorical definition of lesbian is bound to obscure the personal and variable meaning of lesbian identity as it is to as it is experienced by women. Okay. Okay, but I actually do disagree with it. I was like, I agree with it. No, but I disagree with this. Okay. Um so I agree that having like a societal vision of something and then trying to apply it to an individual person's unique subjective experiences might be impractical and counterproductive. Okay, yes, we agree on that. However, what does it say here? Like, this phrase might, okay, listen to this phrase, and then think, how does this phrase make sense if we are conceding that we can't off define what a lesbian is, okay? Listen to this phrase. Okay. In fact, the construction of a categorical definition of lesbianism is bound to obscure the personal and variable meanings of lesbian identity as it is experienced by real women. 
that phrase is not a phrase. What is that? If you can't know what a lesbian is, then how can you know you're excluding lesbians from what lesbianism is? Okay. Sometimes I look like I need to go back to university, and then I'm like a professor wrote this shit, and it makes no sense. So I don't think I need to go back to university, to be honest. Um... Right. Like, she literally, it's so postmodern. She's literally arguing. Listen to this next phrase. She's literally arguing. It's better to have a very vague definition of lesbians so nobody's feelings get hurt. That's more important than lesbians being able to self... Like, this essay is very, very woke because even though it's, like, from 1986 or whatever... Because she is like, the whole essay is about self-defining, right? So if a homosexual, like an actual lesbian, defines herself as a lesbian and says, oh, you define yourself as a lesbian, but we're different, that to her is mean, right? But the whole essay is about self-defining and the power of self-actualization or some shit. Like, it doesn't really make much sense. Okay, here we go. This is what I mean when she's arguing against having definitions. A precise definition of lesbian that establishes unchanging sexual criteria according to which individual women can be judged as legitimate members of the category may not have the flexibility to account for the diversity and variability in subjective experienced, subjectively experienced lesbian identities. Okay. I think a big part of this is that... Um, Why the fuck are you using the word lesbian for everything? That is a big part of the problem in this essay, in my opinion. Because what she means here, like, I'm going to read this phrase again, and I'm going to replace the word lesbian with what she actually is trying to say. Okay. A precise definition of lesbian that establishes unchanging sexual criteria according to which individual women can be judged as legitimate members of the category may not have the flexibility to account for the diversity and variability in subjectively experienced female-female same-sex attraction. Like, a lot of what she's talking about in this book, I mean in this essay, is the commonalities that lesbians have with bisexual women and how this is, like, something that shouldn't be ignored. Good. Sure. That's true. Okay. So why the fuck do you keep using the word les- Like, I understand, like I said at the beginning of the essay, what, at the beginning of the analysis. I understand words mean different things back then. Like, you know, women identified women, what it meant, right? And that lesbian used to just mean, like, sexually- or even in this case, politically, socially, female-oriented, right? Not necessarily exclusive, but to be female-oriented at all. Yes, okay. But, like, you're literally saying that to have the category would, the, would exclude the people who are in the category from doing the things that are diverse within that category. Like, it doesn't make any fucking sense. Okay. Just after reading post- uh, after reading metaphysics, I'm like, this is nonsense. Okay. Lesbian Olympics, sign me up. I know, right? <laughs> okay. Okay, then... Oh, yo, Rachel, yes, let's talk about that this weekend. Rachel has proposed that we're going to talk about trans pride on the next Sister Space on Saturday. So, you better be there. Okay. Yeah, I think after we're done in analyzing this essay, I think I'm going to read the Sisters of the Road thing. Wait, Rachel, you're not at work then, right? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Maybe it won't stream that long, then we can, like, hang out. Okay. I wish they were prudish. Yeah, me too, dragon. That would be better. All right. So she talks about being at women's college, as we have learned, Smith College, from 1977 to 1983. Only five years, but, you know, more than the rest of us. Okay. Okay. Actually, I bet a bunch of you went to Smith or Wellesley or some shit, didn't you? <laughs> All, like, half of the 12 women watching. Okay. Um, and yeah, so she talks about 
so I think it's really, really important to keep in time, keep in mind the time period, right? So is it a thing that when women go off to college, they finally start to like explore sexuality in a non-heteronormative way at a rate that is much higher than they would in high school? For sure. No question. This obviously. Um And she talks about how she thinks it's more prevalent in a women women's focused environment, like a women's college. I mean, obviously, I don't know why that's controversial. I mean, if they're like, just like statistically by the numbers, it's more likely to happen there, isn't it? Like, how is that controversial? Um, so, okay, there is here is like some actual feminist analysis that I can identify in this essay. When she talks about the um, criticism and negative view of women's colleges because <laughs> I support trans prude. This is the best comment of the day, Dragon. You win the best comment of today. <laughs> okay. Um, <clears throat> right. Oh, shit. What was I saying? Right. She talks about the, um, like, kind of backlash against the uh, feasibility of lesbianism on women's colleges. And she is like, this actually has very little to do with lesbianism. That this is all about, um, okay, this is what she says. What is abundantly clear, however, is that at women's colleges where I taught, there was a significant minority of young women who were actively engaged in the process. Wait, no, this is not the right thing. Yeah, this is what I agree with this, what she says here. I believe that the environment of women's college is both structurally and psychologically conducive to lesbianism. I mean, yeah, it just makes it like literally physically more possible to be a lesbian. Um, she's here. This is what it, at least some of their concern is actually unrelated to the level of lesbianism on campus. For one thing, it is still considered unusual for a woman to choose to spend four years. Yeah, yeah. This So she is like. When <sighs> she is like their, the critics or the haters or whatever, their opinion on lesbianism in women's college actually has nothing to do with lesbianism. It's all about um, control and being threatened by women making the choice. She's like, it's very unusual for women to want to go to women's college in the 70s, apparently. Okay. Um, I assume the you know co-ed was all the rage back then when it became like really getting off its feet to be co like real co-ed education. Um, so she is like they're actually critical of the woman's decision to center women in her life to make her wife her life her wife to make her life gynocentric, right? But it's acceptable to other people to say, oh, I'm scared she's going to be a lesbian. There's too much lesbianism there. That's an acceptable thing to say. It is not acceptable thing to say say oh this woman spends too much time with other women and cares too much about other women and i think that's like probably the, one of the only feminist analyses in the whole essay actually <laughs> okay yeah i mean lovely poems this book was published in 1987 so that is true what you have said about this writer but I do think there's, like, women change a lot. That's, like, a lot. That's, like, 40 years ago, right? So, 45 years ago? I can't do math. But, who the fuck is this douche, man? Okay. Um, <clears throat> yeah, okay. Yeah, so if these women, if these essays were written a really long time ago and then later that person became like a wokester, to me that doesn't preclude me from reading their work or finding what I do and don't agree with about it. Um, but it's pretty freaking disappointing. Like, I, I have yet to find, aside from Marilyn Fry, who is still alive but is no longer publishing because I'm sure she's like 90, um, <clears throat> all of the books or theory that I've read 
by women who I'm like, this woman is on point. She knows what's up. I look them up and either they've stopped writing or if they're still writing, they're woke. So this is like the state of things. <laughs> Mm. Okay, bye, Rachel. Okay. So, oh yeah, 6 and 12. Okay, so she talks... Then here she introduces the concept of, like, the born lesbian, which she calls the... What does she call it? The primary lesbian? Yes, the primary lesbian. And then she... What is this? The term she uses here self-consciously chosen lesbian which she terms as um um elective lesbians they've chosen to be a lesbian okay so uh sorry i guess i'm a bit tired <laughs> I don't know, like, my, honestly, my primary feeling, primary, my primary feeling about this section of the essay is that she's so interested in what, I'm not saying that it's something that shouldn't be discussed. Obviously, it should be discussed. She's so interested in what are the similarities between the elective lesbian and the primary lesbian, aka the bisexual who calls herself a lesbian and the homosexual who calls herself, she's so interested in their similarities that she, it seems like she's incapable of discussing them as, like, completely distinct groups that have distinct needs, wants, and desires. Like, that to me is, like, very bizarre. And honestly, like, she discusses them as two distinct groups, like, because she has the terms for each of them, right? But she is, like, they're subcategories of the same group. And I don't, I think starting from that premise, kind of, she kind of shot herself in the foot with the essay, at least from where I'm sitting. Like, if if she had written the same content, but said, like, look, these are bisexual, like, and I go, it, it, it disagrees with the thesis of the essay, but these are bisexual women, and these are lesbian women. Look at all the stuff they have in common, and how they can help each other, and like, blah, 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 that's nice. Like, that, to me, would have been a much more compelling essay in terms of, like, oh, you've brought me around to your side of thinking of things by the end than this. So she talks a little bit about, like, the age differences, how, like, the older lesbians... Um, interpret things and the younger lesbians interpret things um, one thing I did find like very interesting about this essay and I'm like a, something that makes me happy that I read it is this concept of then I was heterosexual now I am a lesbian so the kind of the dichotomy of like I was always a lesbian, but I was doing things that were against my nature, or I did those things, so that's who I was, and now I do these things, and this is who I am now. So these two kind of perspectives on it. And honestly, I never really thought about it before, so I'm not making a pro-woke argument, okay? But, like, why the fuck am I so cold, man? Is it like minus 20? Like, what the fuck's going on? All I did was move my thing away from the window. Okay, let me get some slippers. One second. Momo, look at the ladies, the sisters. 
There you go. There, Momo in the highest quality image you've ever seen. <laughs> okay, so she talks about these two perspectives of that I was always a lesbian, but I was acting against my nature because of social conditioning, or that I was straight when I acted straight, and then I was a lesbian when I acted like a lesbian. I kind of ha see like both sides because to me, Okay, this is a high, I with this whole essay, I'm trying not to take anything personally or to put it like in my personal subjective experience because I'm trying to like entertain it on like a kind of academic level, okay? So don't go freaking out when I say this shit, okay? Are you ready? To me, if we are to say we are against identity politics, right? Which is, I say I'm this, therefore I'm this, right? Or I say I'm this, therefore even if I'm not this, you have to treat me this way, right? So, in that grain, I mean vein, whatever, <laughs> to say that a woman has always been a lesbian but just partook in heterosexual activity is kind of identity politics, isn't it? Because you're saying, even though I behaved in one way and that would put me in this category, you should... That doesn't matter because I say this and I feel this. So to me, I do kind of, I've never really thought about it that way before this essay, and I do kind of appreciate that perspective. On the other hand, obviously, as a radical feminist, I do think the other way, which I have just said is kind of an anti politics, that I think I was always a lesbian. I just didn't accept it to the point of behaving, like she talked about in this essay, incongruence, right? Like, I am a gold star lesbian, but for many years I didn't think I was, I thought I was, like, attracted to men. And so looking back, there is, like, a huge incongruence between, like, my emotions about things and the way I behaved about things, right? And this is kind of what she's getting at at the essay. That, you know, okay, I used to know this lesbian who was, well, okay, I'm going to talk about two different, le like, I said I was trying to stay political, uh, academic, and not get personal, but now, like, whatever, let's get some personal stuff in here. So, I guess I just did that with talking about myself. I'm a gold-plated silver tie. <laughs> but okay, I used to know this one lesbian. She was the first lesbian separatist I ever met. I, I was friends with her for, like, three years or something. Then, one day, this mutual friend of ours, I was like, I haven't heard from her in a long time. I'm going to call her M, the lesbian I'm talking about. I was like, to my other friend, I was like, I haven't heard from M in a long time. Have you heard from her? And this other lesbian was like, oh, haven't you heard? She's dating a guy now. And they got married and settled down and had kids and all that shit. So when I first met her, she was, like, 24 or something. And when she got married and settled down to this dude, I think she was like 27 or something. Um, so, obviously it does happen, right? So my view, and I think a lot of current society's view on that would be, well, when she was calling herself a lesbian, she didn't have like a true deep understanding of herself. So she was claiming that identity because the, at the time that's how she was behaving. But that might not have been her internal identity all along or whatever. That it, I, I don't know. I'm kind of agreeing with the author because she's saying sexual identity, like at least the term, the label you call yourself, right? On that, on that front, I can definitely agree. The label you call yourself changes. I mean, look at me. <laughs> Gay, trans man, pansexual, asexual. Now I'm a lesbian. I got all the LGBT. <laughs> no, I don't think I ever call myself bi. I call myself pan. But, um, yeah. Okay, then this other lesbian. Oh, wait, who was I going to fucking talk about? Oh, yeah, this other lesbian. I don't, I don't even remember her name. It's been, like, at least six or seven years since I talked to her. She... She was... Um very into self-harm she th so there was times when we'd be like talking on the phone and she would be like cutting herself and shit right 
like very, very like self-harming person. Um, Pan is bi, fight me. Yeah, I know, Komutashio. Pan is definitely bi. But because I was all like woke and trying to be trans, like I literally, when I called myself Pan, I knew in my mind, I was like, I'm never having sex with fucking anyone ever. But I'll call myself Pan to like keep the peace. <clears throat> anyway, so this lesbian was like very, very into self-harm. And she lived in a very like woke, you know, city, like a very leftist city in the U.S., and so she actually had trouble finding women to hook up with because she didn't want to hook up with women who were clerios. But in her vein of self-harm, she would go on Tinder and whatever and just hook up with random dudes. And it was like, I don't know, it was all wrapped up in her mental illness. Like it was all like one thing. It's not like she would. But so, you know, that kind of is identity politics on some level because looking at her, her sexual behavior, she wasn't having sex with women. Because she, the way she described it to me was like, she knew she would get like emotionally involved and invested in stuff. So she couldn't sleep with women who were like, politically saw her as a turf or whatever, right? But sleeping with men, she saw it like basically as the same type of thing as cutting. She's like, I'm doing this to hurt myself because when I'm hurt, I feel something or whatever. So looking at her sexual behavior, you said, well, she's straight, right? Um... I don't know, just reading the essay, I thought of those two women that I've that I've known. Um, I think, honestly, what this essay is really talking about is dishonesty. Whether it's dishonesty with yourself, or dishonesty with your community, or the community you want to be in, or society, or whatever. Because, like... Yeah. Yeah. Because it's like, whether you're being honest with yourself about who you're truly attracted to will affect the way you behave, regardless of what you call yourself, right? Or you can be like a lot of like political lesbians. This is what has happened. They are like, I'm a political lesbian. They are like partnered with some feminist, lesbian feminist woman. And then it turns out they were screwing a guy for like the whole time or half the time or something. So it's like their behavior didn't line up with their identity label, so they were dishonest. And like whether you're being dishonest with yourself or with the people out like internally or externally, I think that's really more what it's about rather than like the labels are too mean and too like exclusionary. Like is it dishonest to not understand your feelings though pre coming out? No, but maybe it's not honesty then. Maybe it's like maybe the term is more like self actualized or like to have like an authentic, deeper understanding of yourself. Um, I completely agree with that, Crown World. Um, Crown World says, I think the sexuality... Excuse me. I think while sexuality is fairly straightforward for some people to understand in themselves... It is very tangible and confusing in other people, especially if you've been groomed and stuff. I stopped trying to figure my shit out. No, for real now. Like, I, I spent years trying to understand my sexuality and, like, when I wasn't in, like, a state of huge denial. And, um, no, I know what you mean. Like, when I realized I was attracted to women, I was very fucking confused for, like, a year. And only a year, thank God. But... I totally know what you mean to be like sitting there and being like, look, this is how I feel. What does it mean? I don't know. How do I interpret this? Is this enough information? What if, what if this information of like who I'm attracted to changes next week? Like, how am I supposed to know what that means? Like, it's like, I know what you mean. Um, and like, that's why questioning was at, okay, Momo, I'm coming. Chill your book. And that's why the Q, the questioning, was added in, like, 2005 or whatever the fuck that was. Like, that's why it was added, specifically for that. Because it's, like, you're not going to figure all that shit out by hanging out with straight people, probably, right? It's like, um, it was a corner was saying before, like, um, having, like, a lesbian space for a bisexual woman to enter would be a very good thing for her because she's never... Right? That's a space that's like specifically female focused, lesbian focused. Um, 
The lighting is really weirding me out. Okay. Anyway. But yeah, I don't know if it's so much like dishonesty with yourself as like a denial of the self or like a not even a denial of the self, but a detachment or an, a lack of ability to process the feelings you're having. Um, I don't know. And I'm very like conscious when having these types of discussion like there is a line between was I unaware of what was going on or was I trying to suppress what I was truly feeling or am I now in the future making a story that makes me feel better about what happened there is a very fine line there um yeah I don't know, though, Dragon, it can become kind of, like, obsessive, because, like, at least for me, like, one of the issues I had with the transness was, like, the dishonesty, and so I thought, like, well, even if I'm, like, on some deep level, I thought, well, even if I'm being dishonest about my, like, gender, because I'm, like, you know, transitioning, it's, like, kind of, it's, like, lying, right? I was like, well, at least I'm going to be honest with my sexuality. I'm going to know authentically on a deep level who I'm attracted to and be able to, like, form bonds with people based on this, like, real piece of information about me. Um, yeah. I think Clown World, like, this idea of, like, I don't know and it's okay that I don't know is so important. So important. I very, very much support that. Like, um, you know, when I hang out with women, usually I can tell they're, like, you know, the way they talk, like, oh, my boyfriend, my husband, okay, you're straight, right? Um, when I do ask a woman, are you a lesbian, it's because... I'm like, I think we have something in common. I want to find out what this common thing is. And for you to say, I don't know, I still have something in common with you. Even if I know now, there was a time I didn't know and I still have something in common with you. And I mean, at least that's how I see it. I wouldn't view it as like a kind of, like, I'm sure you experienced that as quite alienating on some level. Um. Anyway, and if if women's sexual power starts, right, if it begins with the ability to say no, then being able to say, no, I don't know. And no, I won't tell you. Like, not because you don't want to. But being able to not give somebody what they're asking for. Like, even in terms of label, before it even comes to actual sexual activity. To me, this is like a big step of in, like, I have the power here. And it's about me kind of thing. Do you know what I'm saying? I feel like I'm getting a little bit abstract. But I support that shit. Clown world, I'm here for you. Okay. Let's get moving on with this shit. Okay. Okay, also what I was thinking, what I was thinking when I was reading this. So a lot of what she's describing is like, you know, these women who come to college and then maybe they have like XYZ labels because she talks about the numbers, right? So a bunch of them are calling themselves lesbians. Meanwhile, they're participating in bisexuality, according to the data that she had from that survey, if I remember correctly. And a bunch of the ones who, yeah, because the number, it was like 9% call themselves lesbians, but only 4% are actively engaging in lesbianism. So a bunch of them are probably celibate. And then a bunch of them are having sex with men, right? And to me, I'm like, what she's done is she's taking lugs, lugs, L-U-G-E-S, lesbians until graduation. I don't know why I added this. Lugs, lesbians until graduation. These are women who get to university or college, whatever, start hooking up with women, dating women, whatever. And then once they graduate, they go and marry, marry a dude and settle down. This is like basically all of the bisexuals I have met in my life fall into this category maybe they started it when they were in high school not university but this is the category they fall in that oh i'm so queer oh i'm so bi i'm so lesbian i dated a bunch of women or like i had sex with a woman one time and then when they're older like because my age group like i'm 25 now like a bunch of my friends from high school and stuff they're actually like which is so weird to me because it's pretty young considering we're from like a pretty urban area a bunch of my friends from high school are married now and like like buying houses and having kids and shit and I'm like, you literally were like the leader of the fucking gay straight alliance and you were calling yourself a lesbian and now you're married to a fucking man. So 
Anyway, I kind of went on a whole thing. My point is, she is bringing up this archetype, the lug, and saying, well, this fits into lesbian, so we need to make sure that the category is like open to them. And I'm like, but do they fit into lesbian? Because to me, a woman who has instances of sex with women, but will not settle down with a woman, or for whom that is like a temporarily state, right? That is not someone who has a lot in common with me. Like, I, I can't, like, maybe when it comes right down to, like, a sexual activity, there's something in common, obviously. But. I mean, I don't know. Like, I say in a lot of my videos, we need to, like, step back and look at things in the, in the context of time. And so I'm very aware while I'm saying this, that this is what I said about trans, right? That I will always be trans, and that's how I'm going to be happy, and I couldn't even imagine not... So, who knows? Maybe in 20 years I'll end up married to a dude. I mean, I really hope not. I like, let's... I don't think I would do that. But right now, I cannot imagine it being, like, a temporarily... A temporary thing in my life. Um, and so... For her to say that, like, they belong in the same category... And we need to be, like, more accepting and, like, not... She literally is... Literally at some point in the essay, she is, like... She's, like, the oppression of lesbians towards bisexuals is even worse. Um, um, is even worse than what the straight... The lesbians experience from the straights. And I was, like, oh, my fucking God. With the whole bisexual victim complex shit. I wonder if this woman is bisexual probably based on this essay or she's just like a woman who's like overly sympathetic um oh thanks uta okay bye uta yeah okay Like, yeah, I don't know. This essay is really stupid. Because, like, listen to this. In contrast, the distinction between primary and elective lesbianism seems to remain more dichotomous over the course of development. Women of all ages with whom I have spoken made reference to such a distinction. They tended to identify as one or the other and experience this identification as one that was stable. Like... So they're even saying that they feel like they're different categories, and yet the author is sticking them in the same category. Yeah, I don't know. Okay. Like, to me, so she, this woman is a therapist, right? To me, like, she talks about, like, you know, it's not uncommon for lesbians to come in and, like, ask into therapy and ask me, like, do you know, I don't know if I'm really a lesbian or whatever. Like, okay. Yeah, this is a very common... Like I said earlier, if you are able to, like, exist in a phallocratic society and somehow come out the other end without a dick obsession, you are, like, a rarity, okay? So, this is, like, a completely fucking expected thing. Is it not? Like... So then she blames it on other women, though. Listen to this. Okay. So it is not uncommon for an elective lesbian, that's a lesbian who's like, this is a choice, right? To express to me privately her speculations about whether she was quote-unquote really a lesbian. And I think in this specific sentence, I think the, the lesbian at the end just means attracted to females. Because it's not, because like I said, she uses the term lesbian to mean like three different things. At times she wondered whether she wasn't really bisexual or even heterosexual. So she's basically like, am I attracted to women? Or am I not attracted to women? Am I attracted to men? Am I not attracted to men? She doesn't know. She's confused. Okay. Well, some primary lesbians interpret such uncertainty as difficulty in coming out, unwillingness to give up heterosexual privilege, or internalized homophobia. It seems to me at least some of the elective lesbians' uncertainty can be traced back to belief within the campus lesbian community that women who choose to be lesbians are somehow less real or legitimate than those who felt they had no choice about it. Like... She doesn't use the term valid. 
but it's basically that's what she's saying. Like, okay. So she's kind of describing me. So the primary lesbian, aka me, the one who was like, this is not a choice, this is the way I am. Would perceive this as an unwillingness to give up heterosexual privilege, difficulty coming out, or internalized homophobia. I would be inclined to think it's one of those types of things, or something along those lines, something similar to that, okay? But then she's like, no, it's not about this woman's ability to self-actualize or to discover her authentic self. What this is about, this can be traced back to the belief within the lesbian community that women who choose to be lesbians are somehow less real or legitimate than those who felt they had no choice about it at all. Okay, this literally to me, okay. You know what this is? This argument, you know what this is? Are you ready? Prepare yourself. This is the same thing as saying, oh yeah, um, I'm trans. I don't have dysphoria and I'm not going to have surgery, but I'm just as valid as you who have dysphoria and are going to get surgery. That's what this argument is. That's what it is. That's literally what it is. I'm going to read it to you one more time. You see how that's what it is. Okay. At least some of the elective lesbians' uncertainty can be traced back to the belief within the lesbian community that women who choose to be lesbians are somehow less real or legitimate than those who felt they had no choice about it at all. Like, to me, it's like I keep saying, I don't understand why the essay is trying to gr group these two women into the same group instead of saying, look, there are two groups and this is what they have in common. Very bizarre. Okay. Like, literally, this is like propagating identity politics. Okay. Like, I literally don't know what the fuck she's talking about here. Listen to this. I guess I should do the... Okay, it's kind of all one gigantic sentence, even though it's like three sentences. Okay. I spoke with more than a few lesbians who were quite intolerant of some heterosexual women's insistence that they simply were not sexually attracted to women and that they couldn't imagine ever feeling differently. Okay, so she spoke to some lesbians who were like, yeah, when straight women say they're not attracted to women, I don't totally believe that. Okay. Implied in their intolerance was the belief that, despite heavy socialization pressure, sexual attraction is never so fixed and unmalleable as to be irrevocably focused on persons of one sex. Okay. Yet some of these same women, this is the part I don't get, yet some of these same women were equally intolerant of the opposite stance, that sexual feelings could exist towards persons of either sex when expressed by a lesbian. I'm going to read that again. Yet some of these women were equally intolerant of the opposite stance that sexual feelings could exist towards persons of either sex when expressed by a lesbian. Like, again, it's like, this is what words fucking mean. If you are experiencing sexual attraction to either sex, then you're not a lesbian. So then it's not an experience of a lesbian. Because that's what words mean. Okay, but... <clears throat> Also, to me, I don't like to me, it's very strange that she's like, I have like a feminist lens of things. Why are you saying that it should go both ways? If you truly like this idea that, like, you know, women will be socially pressured and conditioned to have sex with men, yeah. um, but that it's like outside their, um, No, okay. So she's like, women see it as that if you are having like heterosexual sex and you see yourself as straight, there is a possibility that you are attracted to women and you've never entertained that possibility. You've never given yourself the space to imagine that's possible or to let yourself feel whatever it is that there's potentially you could be feeling, right? Okay. That has fuck all 
like if you are like from a radical feminist which is what she's describing here if you are from a radical feminist materialist perspective saying look women are pressured into being straight and so it's the rare woman who gives herself the space to, to consider and explore am i actually not straight okay that has no fucking comparison whatsoever to the possibility that lesbians who have already gone against their social pressure right who've already stepped out of the paradigm, right? They just didn't consider. Maybe you're into dudes. Like, it like, literally makes no fucking sense. They are not comparable situations. It doesn't make any sense at all. Dragon says she sounds internally lesbophobic. Very much agree. Julia is agreeing. We all are agreeing. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Clown world. I think, I think maybe you're a lesbian if that's how you feel. <laughs> Oh, Dragon, that's so sad. I'm sorry to hear that. Okay. So, yeah, basically, postmodern bullshit. Okay, now I'm looking for the end of the essay. How many more pages? There's like three more pages. Okay. Also, what time is it? It's only three. Oh, someone texted me. What is this? Oh, yeah. When is this, though? Did this already happen? Okay. Okay. But also, so, the this essay is quite incomprehensible. So, Let's go back to something I was talking about a second ago. So she's like, it's it's common for lesbians, and this type of lesbian is the one who chooses to call herself a lesbian, right? To come and privately tell me, you know, I'm not sure if I'm really a lesbian or really bisexual or whatever, okay? Here, she has taken an experience that both the elective and the primary lesbian has in common, and she has ascribed it only to the elective lesbian. To me, this would be a very powerful essay if she talked about, you know, how lesbians can question, like I've said, because all of the messages and signaling you're getting is that you're supposed to be with men. That's what you're for. That's your purpose. Why aren't you doing that? That's what would make you a good person. Do that. It would be a very powerful essay if she talked about lesbians' experience of questioning their sexuality, right? And bisexual women's experience of questioning their sexuality and what they have in common and what they are different. But no... That would be too logical. And she's a postmodernist. So, okay. Okay, here is the term, the use of male identified. Remember how I was saying before that male identified doesn't mean you identify as a man. It means you identify with men and their way of thinking and perceiving society and their value system. Um, okay, I'll, I'll read the sentence before so you have context. The assumption was often made about lesbians who were unwilling to state that they were, were forever uninterested sexually in men, that they must be having difficulty coming out, or were unwilling to accept a stigmatized identity. Sometimes they were assumed to be going through a bisexual phase or worse yet to be male identified with operating and operating under a false consciousness. What does this mean? Let's go over it again here. Sometimes they were assumed to be going through a bisexual phase. Okay. Or worse yet to be male identified and operating under a false consciousness. To be male oriented in their psychology and their values. And to be operating under a false consciousness. So that this is kind of like the self-actualization. Like the authentic self. That your authentic self is in there. And that that is female centric. But then the superficial self. Which is like internalized from society. That, that one is male identified. And that you are denying the real self. Um, yeah. I have also known. Here she brings up the idea that. So some women view, like, bisexuality as, like, a stepping stone in terms of, like, this is a phase I went through before I could accept that I was a lesbian. That was the case for me. 
I've also seen the opposite, which he mentions here. Women who say they're lesbians who later come out as bisexuals. Like, I used to know this one lesbian for like three years. And she didn't like settle down with a dude and whatever, like that other one. But she just was like, oh, you know what? Actually, like, I was kind of confused about it. And like, I've been like rethinking it. And so I think this is like a more accurate label for me now. And she's like, you know, like, I'm still like very woman oriented in my lifestyle and whatever. But I think that this is just being more like honest, like authentic about what I actually feel. And like to me, a big part, who was it that mentioned before? I think it was Dragon. One of you like Dragon or Clown or whatever. Somebody mentioned the disconnect. No, I think it was Mad Adam. The disconnect between the body and the sexuality. And to me, this is another huge factor. Which is why she like, why the fuck did she bring up men? At the end of the essay, she's like, "Well, men aren't sexually fluid." It's a fucking bullshit. Who cares? Um, to me, one of the big reasons I think that women, and this is not from like personal experience, this is from like observation. Okay, one of the big reasons I think that women, their sexuality changes a lot, um, like over time compared to men, is the level of like. how much they have like embodied their sexuality like the the physical consciousness of their sexuality like a lot of women to me like i was saying in the benji soapbox a few days ago they're having sex like this is the thing i'm supposed to do this is the thing i'm going to do to make my partner happy this is what's expected of me this is like i owe this that's how they have sex and it's like, if that's how you have sex most of the time or all the time, you can't even articulate what it is you like, what it is you don't like, what it is that you like a little bit more than you like that, what it is that you, what like, their physical, like, visceral experience of sexuality is, like, so two-dimensional that it's not surprising that if they have, like, a little bit of time to themselves, they have, like, a new different sexual experience, that their experience of the embodiment of their sexuality will change and therefore their under self-understanding of their sexuality and the label they use could change like to me this makes a lot of lot of sense and you won't see that shit in men because men don't operate that way sexually <laughs> a clown girl i didn't mean to call you out my bad <laughs> So well, now she went and opened the door again. <sighs> no, go back. No, oh, come here. No. Okay. Yes, Kamotachio, penetration is different from dick. I should have a whole stream about that. <laughs> I should have like 
<laughs> like a five-way interview with a bunch of lesbians. And be like, Why do you like penetration? And how does that experience, how does that comp- compare and contrast your experience with dick? <laughs> okay. My English is over 9,000 today. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, okay, then she is like... The problem with a lot of these assumptions... No, I know a bird kills me. Yes, she's a bird kills me. Is mentioning um, Momo so weird. Is mentioning um the like. There has been like surveys and studies of like demographics and how much they orgasm, like during sex or like over their lifetime or whatever, and like straight men are always on top. Then gay men and lesbians are pretty high. Which, like, it makes sense. You're having sex with somebody who knows your body type because you have the same body type, right? And the straight men make sense because, like, they're conditioned and women are conditioned that the only pleasure that matters in the bedroom is his, right? And then straight women and bisexual women have the lowest rates of climax during sex. And it's like, well, that makes sense because if you're having sex with a man and the entire approach to the sex on both sides is that it's for him, like, this makes sense. Um, <laughs> even if I, like, woke up, like, one morning in, like, ten years and was like, oh my god, I'm into men. I can't actually, like, imagine, like, going out and having sex with a... D- like, what I know about how men have... I can't imagine, like, being like, you know what? That's a good idea. I'm gonna go do that. <laughs> 87% for lesbians. That's pretty high, right? 87% of lesbian sexual interactions result in orgasms. Like, to me, personally, hearing that number actually sounds kind of low, but. <laughs> yes, uh, Bird Kill Me said, shows that bisexual women don't sleep with women because then it would be higher for them. Yeah, like, if more than half your sexual interactions are with women and they have, like, higher rates of, like, pleasing each other, then, yeah, it will be higher. Okay. Um. Okay, sorry, I keep losing focus. I'm pretty tired. Let's get to the last two pages. All right. I'm not bragging about my skills. No, no, no. I'm just saying, like, generally when I talk to people. Okay. To women. Okay. Yes, I have heard about that dragon fox, but I have yet to personally encounter that. I don't know what that would be like. I feel like it would be really obvious. Right? I don't know. Okay. So, then, she's like, okay, according to, um, (laughs) then she's like, according to everything we've just discussed, the problem is the assumption that what I know about myself can be applied to other people. Like, that, the problem with all of these assumptions is that one person or set of persons presumes an attitude of knowing and understanding the meaning of another person's experience better than the person who is herself experiencing it. In this climate, individual women may have a difficult time finding their own voices and defining their own experiences. To the extent of lesbianism is very narrowly defined, the categories will restrict rather than give full expression to the diversity among women who subjectively define themselves as lesbians. This is the exact same fucking shit as like... Remember when I read that phrase like seven times because I was like, the phrase doesn't make sense. This phrase makes no sense. The last one. Okay, whatever. Let's go through this point by point though. Okay, so. The problem is assuming that your understanding can be put into other people's experience. True. I don't know what other people feel. That's, yes. But if I sit down and I talk with a lesbian about, you know, who are you attracted to? What do you like in bed? This kind of things. We will have a lot in common. So it is not like... I don't need to know, are you the exact same as me, right? Because that's obviously impossible. Nobody's exactly the same. But when I, like I was saying before to, um, oh my God, what the fuck is your name? <laughs> to Clown World. 
if I go up to someone and I'm like, are you a lesbian? What I'm asking them is not like, are you 1000% the same as me? It's like, oh, do we have this thing in common? And so, then, so yes, okay. Knowing or understanding another person's experience rather than the person who's feels. Okay, this climate, individual women may have a difficult time finding their own voices. What does this mean? Does she mean, I think when she's like this, I think could be replaced with like, women have a difficult time using identity politics rather than an accurate description of their behavior and defining their own experiences. So she's basically like, when you have a very narrow definition of what a lesbian is, bisexual women can't stuff their existence into there. To the extent that lesbianism is very, very narrowly defined, the categories will restrict rather than give full, exp full expression to the diversity among women who subjectively define themselves as lesbian. Okay, so at least she used subjective here. But how, okay, this, it literally makes no fucking sense. Did you pay money? I paid, well, I didn't even pay for this book. A friend of mine bought it for me for $14. This is, okay, also though, this is the first essay. I think that some of the other, like, there's some essays about, like, sex and relationships and, like, uh, like intergenerational shit. There's, like, lots of different types of essays in here. So I think it should be good. But I think the first five essays, which are an identity, are going to be pretty painful. Even if I'm eviscerating them. That's still, I think, um, valuable. Um, what... Exp okay, let me ask you this based on this phrase. What expression of lesbianism is being stifled, right? What expression of female homosexual sexuality is being stifled by excluding sex acts that are not female and homosexual in nature? Because she's like, by having this like really narrow definition... We're excluding a bunch of stuff that can give us like interesting information and insight, and like we're, was it? Um, we are restricting rather than giving, f uh, than give full expression to the diversity among women who subjectively define themselves. A so she, maybe I'm not okay. Let me take her at her word. Women who call themselves. So she is saying, if we look at the group of women who call themselves lesbians. And then within that, we are only interested in actual lesbianism. We're excluding a bunch of information we could learn about the group of women who call themselves lesbians. Believe it or not, when I talk about lesbian, I'm not actually interested in the group of women who call themselves lesbian. I'm interested in the group of women who are lesbian. Like, when I do that on purpose, when I say I'm interested, I'm talking listening lesbian... And I mean the women who are lesbians, not the women who call themselves lesbians, right? I am intentionally, intentionally excluding the... What does she say here? I am intentionally restricting my knowledge of the diversity of expression of sexuality because I'm not interested in any of the sexuality that is not female-female. She's basically being like, oh my god, you're like invalidating them. Like, it's so mean. And I'm like, yeah. Because my and my interest in this topic is not to be validating people. I don't know. I mean, I guess she's like a therapist and she's all about validating people or some shit. But like, that's not my, that's not my problem. Like, like, I don't know. So the premise of the book is like psychology among lesbians and like within the lesbian community and lesbian relationships and like lesbian therapists, patient what are all lesbian psychology things right so to me it makes a certain amount of sense that there would be stuff in this book that's like you know what this is like an issue in the lesbian community and so like this is something that lesbians can do to like handle this issue or like lessen the issue or understand the issue or whatever okay no she ha she only taught at smith for five years now she teaches at ithaca but yeah she stopped teaching at smith in like 1982 but yeah um, um, okay. So, when I talk to a woman, and if I say you are not a lesbian, why am I saying that? Am I saying that because I think that she must have the same experience as me? 
to qualify as a lesbian, like 1000% the same? No. It is literally just on. Like, I feel like I don't even need to explain this. Like, if, I, if I'm if i talking to a woman and I say, I don't think you're a lesbian, it's not because I think I have, like, an intrinsic understanding of her experience and what she feels and what she thinks and blah, 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 blah. If I say that to someone, it's because they have said to me, no, I like dick. They have said to me, well, I'm attracted to men. They have said to me that they are not a lesbian. That's why I'm saying that to them. So even in this context, right? She is talking about, like, a lesbian community on Smith College campus. And within this community, you have, like, the polyles, basically, and you have the actual homosexuals, and how within this, like, they're being mean to each other. And I'm like, but yeah, because we are literally different, so stop fucking lumping yourself in with me and saying we're the same. Yeah, then she talks about this thing again, about how they be incongruence. I have made, even early on in my YouTube, like in my first, like, six YouTube videos or something, I'm 100% sure that at some point, I think it was in the video that was, like, parents' reaction to trans kid versus gay kid. I think it's that video. It might be a different video. Or maybe it was my... How a lesbian can think she's a gay man. But whatever. In one of my earlier original videos... I, um, I literally distinguished, I was like, there is a difference between, like, sexual orientation and sexual behavior, right? And whenever I think of that, the first thing I think of is, like, because of, like, the books that I read so much growing up, the first thing I think of is, like, gay dudes in, like, England who have, like, a title, marrying and having kids in order to, like, maintain the title and pass it on, not because they're attracted to women, but because it's like that's what they need. That's my first thought of where it goes because of like my reading patterns as a child. But like I agree with her. Behavior and label and like the actual behavior, self-definition, and the actual sexuality can all be three different things. I agree. This is obviously true, right? How many lesbians have been prostitutes? A lot. Yeah. Like I'm sure you've probably met some if you've been around lesbians long enough. So obviously these things are not, might not all be in the same, there might be an incongruence. But her position is like very fucking woke. It is that if there's incongruence, well, there's no point ever trying to like have a good definition for this. Because then we're like excluding people and it's like, shut the fuck up. Oh, bye only love poems. Please subscribe because <laughs> you're chill. Um. Okay. Oh, I have to be honest, I'm not really keeping track of the live chat, but it seems like things have become dramatic in a way. Okay. Oh, wait. Who's leaving? Well, whoever's leaving, goodbye. <laughs> okay. Um... Like, here she brings this up and then she doesn't really expand on it, which is kind of disappointing. Because, like, another thing that I would be, like, really appreciative in this essay is if she went more into the psychological aspect of it. Because she's a psychologist, right? I feel like there's nothing, there's no, like, kind of psychological insights or, like, a lens or, like, a concept or whatever in this essay that, I did, that is, like, completely new to me. Um, so here she mentions... Um, It appears to be the case, however, that sexual feelings and activities can change. They can be fluid and dynamic. And furthermore, the reality is that feelings, activities, and self-conscious identities may not at all times be congruent. It, may, it has been suggested by social psychologists that people strive for congruence between their thoughts and feelings, and that with respect to sexual identity in particular, we are motivated to achieve congruence between our feelings, activities, and self-proclaimed identities. Like, yes. This to me seems so incredibly based because then she goes on to disagree with it. 
This suggestion, however, does not accord with what I observed during my six and a half years at a women's college in the late 70s and early 80s. To me, this is indicative of a complete lack of feminist understanding. This, like I said, the issue of like identity versus behavior or whatever, or identity versus attraction, whatever, is not actually an issue of identity versus attraction. It is an issue of identity, like what you call yourself, what label you use, and honesty. So she literally is like saying in this specific situation, in this women's college in the 70s, they're obviously like very radical feminist in the opinions that she said, like the way they were treated. They're very radical feminist, right? Like, so to each other, there was a value in saying I'm a lesbian, even if I'm a bisexual, right? This is more an issue of dishonesty within the group, rather than, and like, like the complete lack of feminist analysis to me is like, how many women are attracted to other women, but never say anything about it, never act on it? Right? So they're being dishonest with themselves or dishonest with society or both or whatever. And why is that? Because conditioning, society, all that crap. So when you're in the women's college environment and you observe this, does that tell you that that's how the, all of the world works and all of society works and that everything we know is like useless because this is what you learned in the women's college environment? Like, I'm inclined to say no based on this. Like, What particularly struck me among this select sample of college women was the diversity of self-definitions and the degree of incongruence between their sexual activities and their sexual identities as expressed by both, both publicly and privately. Oh, then she talks about all the possible peer mutations. So this is like honestly kind of stupid, but maybe in the 1980s this was like a big deal. She's listing like you know, how you can say this is what you call yourself, but then your behavior can be this way. You can say this is what you call yourself, but then your feelings are in this way, or whatever. Um, here, at least here, she's being honest. Thus, among women who call themselves lesbians, being honest. A wide range of sexual behavior is evident. Okay, so I wanted to actually, I was almost like, I should stop doing, like, the audiobook style and actually, like, read this out. So. So, in the survey. So, this is the anonymous, what is your actual, like, sexual, here was the, label themselves sexually regardless of their actual sexual experience. So this is like the identity they would prefer to have. 65% said heterosexual, 26% said bisexual, and 9% said lesbian. They're all women, right? So women's college. So then let's compare that to like um, their sexual experiences. So 65% said heterosexual, but 72% had had heterosexual experiences. So there's like quite a few... Um, 7%, I can't do math, yeah, 7% who didn't self-report as heterosexual but who are having heterosexual experiences. And bisexual is a different category, so that means there are a bunch of bisexuals, presumably, who are calling them, or there's a bunch of straight pe women who are calling themselves bisexuals. 7% of the women were calling themselves bisexual even though they were straight, okay? Then let's look at the next percentage. Um... 26 identified themselves as bisexual, and 20% said they were having bisexual sex. So, if we're doing the math, because of the bisexuals who are actually straight, then that number gets pushed into the lesbian category. So that means there's actually, I can't do math, but there's like 5% or something of the lesbians who are actually having bisexual sex then, right? And then women who said their identity was a lesbian was 9%. And women who said their sex practices were lesbian was 4%. So out of all of the three categories, straight, bi, and lesbian, 
bisexual is the category that has the most infl- I mean, lesbian is the category that has the most infiltrators or like dishonest women or whatever. Something she brings up, which I do totally agree with, though, is just that, like, there's a lot of women without experience. Like, I was like this. Like, I identified as a lesbian for four years. I had, like, any, like, even, like, a kiss with a woman. Anything. And I felt very, like, oh, I'm not a real lesbian. Like, I'm lying to people. I'm lying to myself. I don't even know what I'm talking about. How could you know when you've never done it? Like, um. No, but Komutashio, I, I was thinking that, but you need to remember that this is on, like, a women's campus. So I do think that it, if there is a place where it should be easier to do it, I think in the late 70s on a women's campus is the place that you will be easier to find, like, a lesbian date rather than, like, in a co-ed university or something. Um Yeah, I am technically developmentally delayed when it comes to math, but I make do. <laughs> um, anyway. Yeah, so I do think it's worth keeping in mind that obviously there are women who are not having any sex, so their behavior will not line, or who like... You know, when they were in high school, they had one boyfriend, they had sex with one time, whatever. And then now they're in their 20s and they're like, no, I'm a lesbian. But their only sexual experience was like with that one boyfriend in high school. Like they're definitely, that's very pretty common among lesbians. That kind of a thing. Um, then her second major like thought about this is that the lesbians... Here, listen to this. It began to occur to me... This is the most, like, woke thing in the whole fucking essay. It began to occur to me that acknowledging one's bisexuality or raising such issues publicly was as stigmatized as discussing lesbianism, if not more so. So she's literally like, these bi these lesbians are bullying the bisexual women and that's why they're all pretending to be lesbians. Like, it's the stupidest shit ever. Okay. Mm. Then she also talks very briefly about, like, there's, like, one sentence of, like, I just love Mindy. I'm not a lesbian. Like, this is definitely much more common among women than men, you know, that you are, like, having a same-sex physical relationship. But you're like, no, we're not really gay. Like, and obviously that's used with the data and, like, the self-perception, too. Um Her conclusion here is so stupid. She's like, the reason I bring this up is because, like, maybe striving for, like, congruence in terms of, like, what you know and what you feel and what you do is not a good thing. I don't understand. Like, okay, I'm obviously not a psychologist, right? But imagine a woman who calls herself straight and then she goes to the club and she has a sexual experience with a woman, okay? An essential aspect of your personhood, right? Like, if if we view identity, I think most humans view identity as base. Like, if I, okay, let's say I'm a YouTuber, right? I view that as being predicated on the fact that I make YouTube videos, right? So, like, like actually, when I stopped making YouTube videos for, like, two years, I was like, well, am I a YouTuber? Because I've stopped making the YouTube videos. Her position is that, like, if this happens to you with regard to sexuality, like, maybe it's okay to just, like, not even, her position is that if this happens to you with regard to sexuality, you, um, sorry, I'm kind of tired. 
that is not inherent that you will feel some kind of like incongruence and therefore discomfort. Like I can't, the only people who I can think of, the demographic I can think of is like closeted bisexual men who are married to women who go out and have sex with other men. They are like the only demographic I can think of who are like happy with their situation. Right? With the incongruence. I think most people generally are not in are not would not be happy with like a shifting sense of self. Right? Like it's very this is a very stupid like like I was saying before to Clown World, I think it's like really important to be like, I don't know, and that's okay, and I don't need to know. That is a different, completely different thing then, though, from saying, oh no, I'm a lesbian, but I like having lots of sex with men, and you can't tell me that that doesn't make me a lesbian. These are two different things. It's very strange the way she like tries to pull it all together that way. Okay. This I also disagree with, based on my own experience personally. The pressure to be congruent and to proclaim an identity that was in line with their sexual activities was often more externally than internally motivated. I mean, obviously, this is dependent on what the potential options are. Like, if you think you're potentially going to be labeling yourself as either, like, bisexual or lesbian, and depending on your environment, one of those might be preferable to the other. For example, if you're in a women's college, apparently it's more, like, in vogue to call yourself a lesbian, okay? If you are, like, in an Episcopal, call, I don't know, not Episcopal, if you're in, like, a Baptist university or something, right, and you're thinking, like, oh, am I straight or bisexual, obviously there is an external pressure to be, like, oh, yeah, straight would be more convenient, okay? But this is not, she's talking about, like, again, I'm, like, quite disappointed with how, like, superficial the essay is. Internally, internally, is a completely different fucking thing. And for her to just be, like, well, it's usually from the outside, so... Just completely fucking stupid. Um, exactly, Clown World. Exactly. And like, Clown World says, I can understand lesbians having sex with men as a method of self-harm, but to say, yup, I enjoy it, and I'm still a lesbian, though, makes zero sense. Because also, it's like, in that is like an incoherent belief to have, right? That like, oh, my friend, she's a lesbian. When she has sex with men, she's self-harming herself. Me, I'm a lesbian. When I have sex with men, it's a good thing because I like doing it. It's like, so obviously you're not lesbians then. Like, you're not in the same category together, if that's the case. Lesbian erasure again, exactly. Um, okay. You guys bring up a hypothetical. But listen, this is the next phrase after what I just read. These women are real, not hypothetical. Although the kind of lesbian they represent did not constitute a majority of the self-defined lesbians with whom I spoke, I think that the way they experience their identities and their relation to the community has implications for how psychologists talk about sexuality and sexual identity. Okay, whatever. Like, okay, this phrase. Identity is constructed both societally and psychologically. It is both a social and a personal process. Okay, then let me read three phrases back and for you to understand that this author is dumb. Okay, so... Identity is constructed both societally and psychologically. It is both social and a personal process. Okay, three three um, phrases back. The pressure to be congruent and to claim an identity that was in line with their sexual activities was often more externally than internally motivated. But you literally just said that it's ex external and internal. And then you're saying no, but it's only the external that's pressuring them and the internal is not, doesn't matter. When you literally, then like two sentences later are like, no, but it's both internal. Like, it doesn't make any sense. Okay. Okay, then this is, um, yes, they are by erasing themselves. I agree. This also, to me, is very manipulative. Then here she is like, well, all of the definitions are only in the context of like the dominant culture, aka patriarchy. So like, what does it even mean anyway? It's like a whole like s like paragraph or two about that. And I'm like, this to me is the same mechanism as when she brought up rich. She knew that what she was saying was controversial and unpalatable. So she is like trying to couch it in like feminist concepts to be like, look, but it's not me saying it. It's like, this is like the bad guys over here. Remember? Like. 
it's actually very gaslighty because is she trying to say that like radical feminist lesbians that their view of like there is a difference between homosexuality and bisexuality is only because they're de defining things within the dominant patriarchal culture because if that's what she's saying that's extremely like asinine and also gaslighting guys i have to say i'm so happy with like the computer and the mic and the everything it's like very comfortable um what time is it? We are on the last page. Our second last page. It's 3.46. Okay. Yeah. I think I'm going to read some more of the murder mystery today. Okay. We're almost at the end. Okay. Then I actually do bring... I actually do agree with her on this. She's asking, like, what is coming out? Like, there's a lot of assumptions about that. Yeah. I'm actually very self-conscious about the image now. Because I feel like next time I get a pimple, it'll be, like, huge and visible. Look, I didn't want... I actually... I didn't get, like, the nicest camera that I was thinking of getting. This is, like, the one step lower than the camera I actually wanted to get. <laughs> I wanted to get the cheapest camera ever. <laughs> and my sister was like, you do not. Because I was like, I want it to be blurry. <laughs> so that I can be more relaxed on camera she was like don't do that to people like they all have nice screens now and nice computers like they will notice the difference <laughs> right. um okay so I agree there is a ugh. this is something I hate so much about the Wokies and like even I have observed this shift the Wokies the genderists are so into coming out. They're like, coming out is everything. You cannot be happy till you come out. You cannot do anything. Like, I literally met people who were like, you know, I got into like the college that I wanted to get into for like the degree I wanted to do, but I couldn't go yet because I haven't come out to like the people. So like, how can I live my life and be happy if I haven't? And I'm like, you can still do shit. You can pay your bills. You could have friendships. You can like... I don't know. I'm not saying that it's like a good thing to be in the closet, but I think it's like really over the top the way they act about it. Like basically your whole life is fucking pointless if you can't come out. And I'm like, that's obviously not true. Also, that is obviously a very harmful idea to have when there's obviously a lot of people who cannot come out because it's not safe. Um, like literally my therapist, when I was a teenager, like, I was referred to this fucking woman because of, like, a f like physical abuse in the home, okay? So it makes the whole thing, like, completely mind-boggling. I was referred to her for that reason, right? That I needed support, okay? Then she was like, you know what? You need to come out because you're depressed and anxious. Which, you know, was definitely because of the environment I was in, 100%. And then when I left, I still had, like, PTSD, but it wasn't as bad. So she's like, oh, you're depressed and anxious. You know what's going to help with that? If you come out to the to the people that you're scared of that you live with. How is that supposed to help me be less depressed and anxious? How is that supposed to help me make my day-to-day -day life more bearable? Because it does not have anything to do with reality. It's their fucking ideology that, like, coming out is, like, it's like a right, right? It's like a transubstantiation of your ideology into the real world. Anyway, I just, I think the whole way that coming out has become a thing. Like, you remember the It Gets Better campaign from like 2007 or whatever that was? Maybe it was 2010. I don't remember. Remember the It Gets Better thing though? In that, I remember like watching those. A, a bunch of those people were operating on the assumption, like, you know, it's hard to come out, you know? Sometimes it's not safe to come out, you know? Like, sometimes even when you want to come out, it's not, like, the right time yet. Or, like, you're not in the right place to do that. Like, to do it safely, to, like, whatever. Like, there was an, an implicit acceptance that, you know, coming out might not be the best thing for you. Or even if it is the best thing for you right now and right here might not be the best time or place to do it, right? You look on Reddit, all of these kids, they're like, yeah, I had to come out to my family even though they want to kill me. And I'm like, why? Why? No, you don't. Don't do that. It's very stupid. Anyway. So she has like a kind of similar, very like vague and like comment on coming out. That therapists think that like, you know, you need to come out to like self-actualize or whatever. And she thinks it's like dangerous to have like a two-dimensional um, perspective on it.
Yeah, I totally agree with all that stuff. Okay, to be honest with you, there's like two paragraphs in here that I'm too tired to be bothered with. I'm going to go to the last paragraph. Okay. This is literally like a woke argument. Okay, I'm going to start halfway through the last paragraph. It's a pretty long paragraph. We have been told that we are not quote-unquote real women unless we are wives and mothers. And to counter this, feminists have been forceful and articulate in asserting that one sex is not related in, excuse me, in any inevitable or natural way to one's sexual preference or societal role. In a similar vein, I suggest, on the basis of this so fucking manipulative, on the basis of my discussion with a selective sample of college women, that sexual feelings and activities are not always accurately described in our sexual identities. Th yes, because people are dishonest and there is like external and internal factors of why you say what you say and why you do what you do. Like, if you fill out a thing for auto insurance, are you going to say like, yeah, I speed every day? I mean, I don't know, never filled out one of those. But like, are you going to say you speed every day? Or are you going to say, no, I'm very good at following the speed limits and that's why I qualify for this? Like, it's just so fucking stupid. Of course, there is like... Oh, Corner, I'm so sorry about that. Corner, is this your first time on my channel? If it is, welcome. I'm very glad you're doing well now, Corner. Corner. Just so you know, like, half of the women in the live chat are desisted. And we have sister chats on Saturday, which is me and Rachel. She's a detransitioner. I'm a re-identified. And we talk about that shit. So if you have some kind of trauma with therapists trying to trans you, this is the place to talk about that shit. You are very welcome here, sister. Okay. I'm very sorry that's what happened to you. It's very shitty. Okay. Like, to me, the last paragraph is built on, like, a misunderstanding of feminism, honestly. Because she is like, she's like, well, what a woman is is like a social group, right? Like, there's like a social connotation. And we know that even if you don't fulfill the social connotation, you can still be a woman, right? That's what she's saying. In a similar vein, I suggest that on the basis of my discussion with a select um, sample of college women, sexual feelings and activities do not always accurately describe in either or terms, nor do they exist in the simple one-to-one -one relation of our sexual identities. Yes. So. Is she trying to say that being put into, like, the box lesbian is just as, like, prescriptive and restrictive as being put into the woman box? Like, I don't fucking understand what she's saying. It's very stupid. Oh, wait, what was my problem before? I wasn't taking her literally enough. Let us try taking her more literally. In a simple one-to-one -one relation to our sexual identities. So, is she trying to say that we need to be more hyper-individualistic? I think that's what she's trying to say. Which makes sense why she's a queer theorist now. Okay. Just as, as we have protested the construction, the constructing social definition, so sorry, just as we have uh, protested the constricting social definition of what a real woman is, precisely because it was serve, has served to oppress women and to limit the express, this is very, very, this is the gaslighting, so what I was talking about. Just as we have protested the constricting social definition of what a real woman is, precisely because it has served to oppress women and to limit the expression of our diverse potentials, so too must we be careful in our social construction of sexuality not to construct categories that are so rigid and inflexible that women's self-definitions put them at odds with the social definitions.
So too must we be careful in our social construction of sexuality not to construct categories that are so rigid and inflexible okay, that women's self-determinations put them at odds with the social definitions. But like... <coughs> but this makes no sense. Yet again, it's like, what is even the point of the word lesbian if this is what you think? It makes no sense. So she is like, it's too um, restrictive to say that if you are this, you must fit into this. To fit at odds with the social definitions. Why do we need to fit into the social definitions then? Like, it just makes no fucking sense. Okay. To do so only limits the expression of the diversities and variabilities of women's sexual identity. Okay. You know, like, I'm all for, like, understanding women's sexuality in any direction. And I don't mean sexuality in terms of orientation. I mean sexual, like sexual behavior, okay? I'm all for understanding women's sexual behavior, be they of whatever sexual orientation, yeah? But this essay about lesbian psychology is not about lesbian psychology. This essay is about Jesus fucking Christ. It's not about Jesus Christ. <laughs> this essay is about, like, how basically lesbians need to include bi's more and need to like be open to learning more about them. And it's like, she's so sneaky the way she does it because she's not saying lesbians should learn from bi women. Like, you know, what's their experience of female attraction? What's their experience of female same-sex relationships? She is very, very carefully implying. Well, not even carefully, because at one point she comes right out and says it actually. But for most of the essay, she's very carefully implying you know, lesbians, just because you don't have sex with men doesn't mean you can't learn a thing or two about your sexuality from women who have sex with men. That's basically what the point of the essay is, honestly. But, like, um, and, like, well, you say that straight women should, like, consider the possibility that maybe they could be lesbians. Doesn't she even say at one point in the essay that that's kind of like how white people don't think about their race or something? So most people assume they're straight just because, like, that's what society thinks most people are supposed to be or whatever or like narratives in the media or something but like she can't apply that to les like she doesn't understand that for lesbians versus bi women it's the same thing like i don't know um anyway we got to the end of the essay so I don't know if it's tomorrow. I think it's Thursday, uh, Friday, my next essay. I don't know. We'll see. Um, my kind of plan for now is that these will be scheduled and the, the murder mysteries will be like when I have time and energy. Mm. <clears throat> oh, I have a nice camera now. Can you actually see this? This is where the book came from. Uh, Glad Day Bookshop in Toronto. Um, they don't really have... Like, this is, like, a very anomalous book for them. They literally don't even have, like, a lesbian section. Like, they kind of have a lesbian section. It's all fiction, which is, like, that's fine. But they don't have, like, any lesbian history. Any, They don't have any feminist or, like, lesbian feminist, like, books at all. I mean, Dragon, you can go. I haven't been in months. But you tell me what's there now. Like, when I went in there last time... Oh, my God. It's been so long. The last time I went in there, um, almost all the books were, like, queer theory and trans shit. And then there's, like, a hand of so many books about coming out and sex. Lots of books about coming out, lots of books about sex, and lots of books about trans shit and queer ideology. There was no, like, lesbian philosophy, lesbian psychology, lesbian... Like, this is, like, from the used book section, and my friend who bought it for me said that she had seen it sitting there for weeks. Like, so nobody was interested in it. And, um, yeah. Yeah, it must have been years ago that the book was brought there. Um, this essay gets zero out of five stars from A Bird Killed Me. <laughs> um... Well, I'm not going to say where I got this information, but I know for a fact 
but in the basement of Glad Day, there is a fuck ton of books that are like not PC. So they're not getting put on the shelves, but they have them. And they're just sitting there. So like, it might theoretically be possible to call Glad Day and to be like, oh, yo, I'm looking for this book. Like, do you think you might have it in the basement? And like, maybe somebody will go look for it for you or let you go look for it or something. Like, there's a pot. I think they have a bunch of books that probably turfs would like to read. Let's invade. <laughs> um, and yes, used bookstores are the best. I haven't been to a used bookstore like, well, lockdown is like kind of just finishing now in Ontario. So we've been in lockdown for like two years here. So, um, <clears throat> so the next essay is called Issues of Identity and Psychology of Latina Lesbians. So this, I think, will be more about race within homosexuality rather than, like, what is homosexuality? Which, like, I really fucking hope it is because I definitely don't have much patience for this, like, anybody can be a lesbian bullshit. But, I mean, there's, like, four more essays in this identity section of the book, so. I love Forbidden Basement books. <laughs> okay, guys. So, this has been Chill. Turf Team 6 reporting for duty. <laughs> I feel like this, like, um, okay, so what is it? Cheris books. Women and children first. What's the one in Atlanta? I can't remember the one in Atlanta. There's like a couple, a handful of women's bookstores in the US that are still around. Now they're pretty woke. But I, I don't think Karis is woke because I think I've seen them at a music festival, like a women's music festival before. But a lot of these bookstores are woke now. Like, I know Women and Children is now woke. But I bet you they also have, like, a basement or, like, you know, a storage unit or something with all the books they have that they can't sell because they're not PC. Like, they're out there. We just need to, like, fucking find them. Anyway, okay. I'm very tired. I think, perhaps, I do not have the energy to read... Well, no, okay, I'm going to read, like, at least a couple chapters of this. I'm going to have some food and go to the washroom, and then I'm going to start another stream, okay? So, thank you all for tuning in. As always, please go to my channel, put set reminder on all the videos. I know that, like, the last week-ish, I've been very bad at doing my scheduled videos because I've been traveling, and then I had, like, a health thing, and then, like, whatever. Now everything is good. I'm on top of my shit. I have scheduled the things for the times that I can actually do them, so you will actually see me at the times that I'm scheduled to do things. Okay. So, thank you all for coming. I will see you in, like, ten minutes or whatever. Um, <clears throat> uh, for the murder mystery. Okay. Bye!